In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to set up a Belmont Rapid Infuser. This is the Belmont Fluid Management System or FMS2000 Rapid Infuser. Also attached to the IV pole is a disposable 3 liter large volume reservoir and a 3 spike disposable set. We're going to first open the 3 spike disposable set. You can operate the Belmont at the full range of flow rates with this set. Included with the set is a smaller reservoir that's 120 cc's, which will disconnect here by twisting the lure fittings. The Belmont inner circuit includes a heat exchanger and lure fittings, which we'll use to connect to the large volume reservoir. This is the 120 cc reservoir, which we just removed from the set. It is a 250 micron coarse blood filter. Our institutional preference is to use the 3 liter large volume reservoir instead of the 120 cc reservoir. One particular advantage of this larger reservoir is the ability to recirculate blood components back to homogenize the mixture. As a general word of caution, the operating manual for the Belmont does recommend avoiding mixing lactated ringer or other calcium containing solutions with citrated blood products. At the top of the reservoir, there are three connections for three fluid supply tails. All in all, you can attach five distinct infusions in total to the three fluid supply tails. The reservoir is then dropped into the large reservoir holder. To install the disposable set, first open the Belmont door. There are three primary components that the circuitry needs to be aligned with the heat exchanger, pressure chamber, and fluid out detector. This is the fluid out air detector where the interlock block is installed. Below that is the pump itself, which circulates fluid down into the heat exchanger and out into the pressure chamber. Any air detected at this point will cause the Belmont to recirculate the solution back into the large volume reservoir by diverting fluid away from the patient infused line to the left. The fluid is directed to the right of the valve wand into the thinner recirculate line and back into the reservoir. The first step to installing the set is to align the heat exchanger with the red arrow pointing up. The pressure chamber is then firmly but carefully inserted. The wider patient infused line is to the left of the valve wand and the thinner recirculate line is to the right. And finally, the interlock block is positioned into the fluid out air detector. You can now connect the large volume reservoir to the two connection leads at the top of the circuit. This here is a close-up of the interlock block and you can see how it sits right on the shelf of the fluid out air detector. As you connect the reservoir to the circuit, make sure that the two connection leads are not stretched or kinked, or you'll experience flow restriction and fluid out alarms. This is what the completed installation looks like. This is the infusion line to the patient, and you'll notice that it diverts to the left of the valve wand. You'll want to confirm that the tubing is open and that all connections are tight. You can now close the Belmont door and lock it. As the Belmont is powered on, you'll notice the words AC power present if the Belmont is plugged into AC power, and then the prime screen will appear. To prime the circuit, a fluid bag is spiked and a clamp is open to fill the reservoir. To start priming, select the prime button and 100 cc of fluid will then be recirculated through the set to remove any air and replace the internal circuitry with fluid. You can see a prime volume countdown displayed and priming is completed when the volume reaches zero. Next, the patient line also needs to be primed. This is a vital step to ensure that the patient line is completely free of air. To quickly prime the patient line, press and hold the patient line prime button. As soon as the patient line is primed and no air is visible, hit stop. At this point, you're ready to connect to the patient and start infusing. 
As you start infusing, the Belmont is initially set at 10 cc's per minute. If you want to infuse immediately at a rate of 500 cc's per minute, you can press this button here. You can also adjust the infusion rate with the up and down arrows. This box represents the temperature in the line, and this is the pressure in the line. If you want a bolus, you can hit this button to administer 200 cc's. This volume can be adjusted. So let's start by going directly to a rate of 500 cc's. You can see the rate starting to rev up, and you can also monitor the increase in the line pressure. Again, if you want a bolus, you can hit the bolus button, and to change the bolus volume, you can hold it, and it'll circulate through the list of available options. Now the bolus volume is set to 450 cc's. The recirculation button manually closes off the circuit to the patient and purges any air from the system. After every 500 cc's, the system will automatically do this. Now let's ramp this up to see how fast we can get to. This particular model maxes out at 750 cc's per minute. If you have a kink in the tubing or other downstream obstruction, you'll be given a high pressure detected warning. Now, if you're using the Belmont without AC power, it'll show battery, no heating in the top right. You'll also get no heating with flows of anything less than 10 cc's per minute. And once you get back to 10 cc's per minute and connect it to AC power, the Belmont will again start to heat the solution. Special thanks to Nancy Wyman for her incredible expertise.